Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter 5 and moving into the last topic of this chapter that is 5.7 Improving the test process with STEP. Here the very first thing STEP stands for Systematic Test and Evaluation Process and this is just similar to the CTP that is Critical Test Process where we generally don't talk about uh, any specific order. You just have to pick up those areas which needs any improvement but there's no cyclic and sequential process which need to be followed in just like TMMI or TPI next which generally makes use of such orders and sequences. So STEP is another model which basically helps you to highlight those critical areas or those areas or those activities which basically needs improvement and you take necessary actions and plan out the things to perform them in order to check whether the improvement actually happened or not. So STEP is primarily a content reference model where basically we talk about what kind of documentation are you preparing and what kind of you know uh, the requirement gathering is happening because a lot of the time we generally face challenges due to lack of information and that's where STEP can cater you or assist you to meet those expectations and improvements uh, ideas to add more value to your quality process. So in turn these documentations will add value to the overall process maturity. So STEP is primarily a content reference model which is based upon the idea that testing is a life cycle activity that begins during requirement formulation and continues until retirement of the system. The STEP methodology stresses test then code. That means something related to the TDD which you know from the Agile methodologies and we have a test method called as test driven development the same thing here that is test then code by using a requirement based testing strategy to ensure that early creation of test cases validates the requirement specification prior to design and coding now of course the tdd approach that is test then code approach is very trending today is just because that at the end of the day, if it is a test which has to validate whether the requirements are met or not, then why don't we start with that? And creating those test cases, though initially it will fail because it doesn't have any kind of code, it doesn't have any kind of architecture, but at least we have got our confirmation test or confirmation check which need to be run in order to validate a requirement's expectations. Now that's where test and code is very helpful and this step will support the same approach. Now, basic premises on which this methodology works includes a requirement-based testing strategy. That means the strategy here used is more of a requirement-driven and make sure that your organization follows detailed documentation of the requirement for that. Because not all the cases basically supports a detailed documentation of requirement and requirement-driven approach in order to derive the test cases right at the beginning itself. Testing starts at the beginning of the life cycle. Of course, the very first thing will be to get started with the testing activities. And then tests are used as requirements and usage models to further design it or design the product and write the code for the same. Test where design leads software design. That means the test where designs are predefined before the software design can be actually done. So we are just talking about initiating all the testing activities much earlier compared to the basic software development activities. Defects are detected earlier or prevented altogether. That's the one of the benefit which you remember from the foundation level that early testing saves time and money but also helps you preventing the defect. Defects are systematically analyzed as we proceed ahead with designing and codes and testers and developers work together. That's the best thing which can be uh, you know, highlighted here that with help of this step model, you can actually bring both of the team together and remove that miscommunication or collaboration issues between the two different teams working for a common reason. Now, in some of the cases, the step assessment model is blended with TPI next maturity model in order to you know see the best outcome so if you want you can even combine the tpi next as a part of the process plus the independent areas which you're following to be combined together to get the best outputs now that's up to you what kind of benefits you can actually look forward to in order to combine them if it is not going to benefit or you don't have any scope for that you can still continue with this step now here is a little more input on the same Let's have a look on this particular deck here on the slide that we are talking about some of the artifacts about this step. 
Now, of course, on the left side, you see a detailed architecture that what step will basically require in order to uh, take care of performing certain activities. So we got the major roles as manager, analyst, technician, and reviewers. Uh, phases basically include the plan strategy, acquiring testware, and measure behavior. So I think we are talking about early testing here. So all these things will be expected to be happening much earlier. And this is from the point of improvement of the overall test process, not from the point of SDLC. So SDLC is different. And here we are talking about the maturity of the test process, which can be done with help of the planning of the strategy, acquiring the test where necessary at the beginning, and measure the behavior of it. And the work products which must be taken care of at this point of time is of course the documentation as it is a requirement based approach or requirement driven approach documentation is one of the important thing procedures and data procedures basically the sequence of actions which you're going to perform the test data which is required for the same and support the software so that's another thing which need to be taken care of and on the other side with the right there's a comparison of aligning the software uh, you know development phases with those of the step activities which should be prioritized so in case uh, we do want to recall some of our foundation skills we did understand that uh, from the uh, characteristics of good testing in the chapter 2 of foundation that there are certain things which we say that for every development activity, there must be a corresponding activity. But there we were just limited to uh, the point of uh, coordinating from the review. But now we are talking about preponing our activities of the testing much earlier in the software development lifecycle. So for an example, if I'm talking about business requirement and following that, converting them into formal specifications, they should parallelly have a corresponding activity of developing the overall test plan analyzing the objectives and designing the test in fact. So that means right at the requirement level, when you're busy gathering and formally documenting it, we are done till planning and designing of the test. When it comes to architecture of the design, we are actually implementing the test plan and the design of the test cases and detailed design phase and the code implementation, we actually execute them. The right moment the code is ready, you execute the test. When the code is ready, you execute the test and check the adequacy, how adequate your outcomes are, if there is any kind of tweaking need to be done for the code in order to meet the passing of the test case, you need to make sure you do the refactoring of the code quite often as as far as you meet the expectation and evaluate the software and the testing activities which we have performed. So I think this gives you a very clear picture of what exactly STEP is all about. And if in case you do need anything more beyond this, which is not a scope of our syllabus, but of course you may always have, you can always search for the STEP as a option on the internet and you can find more about it. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.